Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk with Marcel. Today's guest is someone that I met a number of years ago, and I was amazed with all the different things he actually does. He is an accountant, that's one thing he is, but he is a creator, a photographer that is so intense in the type of uh, photography that he does. He calls it non-traditional portraitures and also fine art photography. Now this gentleman also works for the University of Hartford's radio station WWUH. That's um, FM 91.3. And his name is Larry Belansky. Photographer, disc jockey, and accountant. Let's talk. Larry, how you doing? I'm doing just great. Thanks for coming to the show. Glad to be here. I am so excited to talk about the photography that you have. And you brought some pieces, and we're going to be able to show our audience the pieces, which is going to be very cool. But I want to find out, Larry, like, how did you get to do what you do? Photographically. I started actually way, way back when I went to uh, summer camp and they had a photo studio where one of the activities was learning to develop film. From that point I had a latent interest uh, in photography and moved forward a number of years to college. I went on to the student newspaper as the business manager when the photographer quit. They had equipment, they had a great lab, and they had the university photographer to guide me. With that, I said, I'll take the photography job and, as well. And uh, the rest is history. I worked my way through college doing a lot of jobs, one of which was newspaper photography. Oh, interesting. So you're a newspaper photographer for the college newspaper. Well, I started with the college newspaper, and through that, I became a stringer for a number of uh, local newspapers, the, the weeklies mainly. Okay, so where, where did this all start? This all started, uh, the serious stuff started at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, uh, UWM. Not a branch campus, a separate university from the University of Wisconsin. Um, and I went there full undergrad. Uh, that's where it all started. Do you remember the newspaper's name? The Post. Okay. The UWM Post. And then some of the local papers, what were they? The Southside Times. Uh, I did have one published in the Milwaukee Journal, which today merged, and it's the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel or Sentinel Journal. They had two papers at the time, a morning paper and an evening paper that are now merged. But uh, it was things like the Southside Times and, and other similar papers that published maybe weekly. So you, that, that was your passion of um, building a repertoire in photography. But, but you also were involved with um, accounting. So how did that, all that start? Well, my father was a non-certified accountant. His eldest brother was a CPA under the gra grandfathering clause, because he became one before the CPA laws. and. He was also an attorney, and my father's twin brother was a, an attorney. So I went to business school, undergraduate. I was an accounting major, went on to law school, uh, emphasizing the tax and related type courses and staying away, excuse me, staying away from the things like criminal law and tort law that didn't interest me. And I, when I graduated, I went directly into the tax department of one of what is now the big four firms. And I spent a total of 20 years, plus or minus a little bit, with two of the big four. Wow. So, and, and all this time you're, you're also taking photographs. 
Well, all this time I'm taking photographs and the big firms especially like it when you do a lot of outside development type activities and I got involved with the boards of directors of arts organizations. One being a very small uh, suburban art gallery and uh, I had enough artistic talent to handle the open studio because everybody on the board taught something and I couldn't paint, I couldn't draw, so they said you have enough artistic talent to unlock a door, write a check to the model, and lock up after the class. And that's when I started doing some figure photography. Okay. So, um, now, all that photography at that time, was it color or black and white? I did a little bit of color, but I really wanted to do everything myself. And color was very complex and very expensive for the equipment as well as to do it. So I did mostly black and white. So do and you remember what equipment you used back then? Oh, sure. Uh, my camera, my personal camera was a Pentax. And then I moved on to Nikon. I'm a Nikon guy now and have been for many years. Uh, I used a Bogan enlarger in the black, in the black and white dark room. And I printed all my pictures. I would proof the rolls and then pick the ones to blow up and play with them, exhibit them. I had my first exhibition while I was in law school at the student union in, at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And I went from there. I, I could spend hours in the dark room. Three, yeah. four o'clock in the morning, I could be found in the dark room. Really? So, so, um, the, um, so your gear bag right now is Nikon? Nikon. I, yeah. I, I shoot Nikons. Now, um, there's a little difference now with, um, you had film, actual film. Do you still yeah. do film today? I don't do any film today. I sold off three of my four Nikon film cameras and back in about 2006, I started switching over to digital. I started with a little point and shoot just to see if I liked digital. And I use that the way a lot of the professional photographers use Polaroid. They would shoot a couple of test shots to see if the lighting works, if the pose works, and then if it did, they'd go back to the film camera and shoot. And uh, slowly but surely, I switched over to digital, but that doesn't mean I spend any less time working on pictures. Yeah, so now let's talk about, like, you. We were talking earlier about you have like three different types of, of um, uh, photography that you're, you're, you're working with. One was figure photography, and then another one was performance, and the other was, um, what was the other one that you're talking about? Well, we do scenics and uh, fine art photography. We, my wife and I, she became my protege uh, shortly after we got married, uh, she had a point and shoot and wanted to learn more. And uh, I taught her and she's learned a lot. And you'll see some of the pictures and you won't be able to tell which is which. But some of the pictures we'll see is, are hers. Uh, she does a beautiful job. Uh, and uh, she's come a long way over the last several years. And we now work together under the name LJB Special Photography. And we exhibit together. We do. Uh, shows. We'll be doing a show in Madison in October. We currently have three works, two of mine this time and one of hers were selected in the juried show at the Spectrum Gallery in Centerbrook, Connecticut, part of Essex. Uh, we show frequently at the uh, Art League of New Britain and uh, other galleries as well as other art fairs. Great. That's, that's exciting. I'm glad you... <laughs> So you're going to be local in Madison. What was the date on the Madison one again? I'm, I think it's the first weekend in October. Great. So and you, when you um, exhibit these at like the art show in, in Madison, you, how many photos would you bring? Oh, we'll bring a lot uh, because we'll bring various sizes. Uh, we don't print a lot of the same photograph. We'll print a few copies of this, a few copies of that. But we'll bring uh, everything from uh, four by sixes, small, small prints, 
uh, in, and note cards up to maybe 20 by 30 canvas gallery wraps. Great. Well, we have some of your photography, um, and I'm going to bring it up on the screen in a minute so everybody can see what they, it looks like. Um, let's talk about one of these pieces. Let, let's start with the performance work. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, here's this piece. What do you call this piece? Dance Ballerina Dance. Okay. It, so it then let's talk about this piece. It was taken live in performance. At this one, we were actually part of the audience, not part of the production. Uh, Faith and I have done a lot of production work, Faith being my wife. Right. Uh, have done a lot of official production work. We were with the uh, Park Road Playhouse for the entire run of the uh, Playhouse itself, uh, doing theater photography um, for the Playhouse to use in their brochures for their to give to p reporters for reviews, and we'd go in at a final dress rehearsal and run around literally on stage at times. Uh, right now, I've done every single Podunk Bluegrass Festival. I think they held the 22nd or 23rd this year, and I literally again go on stage and take photographs as the performers are performing. They don't stop for me. There's no light. Uh, control for me. I have to use whatever's there. I try not to use flash uh, and almost never do. Okay, tell us a little bit about this. This, this, is a, this, this was ballerina a, piece. This was an outdoor performance uh, by the, I believe it was the Connecticut Ballet. And Faith and I just decided to go on spur of the moment and we always drag our cameras with us. And we just like this particular picture. It, and we've enhanced it a little bit. Uh, we do use Photoshop, and Photoshopping is not necessarily a bad word. Uh, it is if you're trying to use it to cover up something or to make something uh, look real when it and tell people it's real when it's not. We don't uh, do that. When people come up, we're, we're thrilled when people look at our works and say, uh, what kind of paints did you use? And we yep. have to tell them it's no paints, it's a photograph. Then we've accomplished our, what we call beyond realism, beyond photorealism. Uh, and this one has been enhanced a little bit, no, no question. Um, but this one is fairly realistic. We did minor touch-ups on this one. Uh, you'll see some works that are, quote, heavily photoshopped, unquote. Okay, now let's look at another. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this piece. This piece is photoshopped, no question about it. The picture of Hubert Humphrey, I call it performance because he was actually speaking. I was there taking pictures for the organization that was sponsoring his speech. When was this? Oh boy, <laughs> Okay. 19 early 1970s, I think. Okay. Uh, and it's a black and white photograph that I have made sepia toned. I took out the background, and on a, one of my visits to Milwaukee, um, my wife had never been there, and she, you know, you've heard Fister, Fister, Fister on uh, the TV. Um, oh, what was that program? <laughs> Laverne and Shirley. Okay. Laverne and Shirley always talked about the Fister, and the Fister is a grand hotel, grand, great hotel, and she always wanted to go there. So what I did is I took a picture of my wife standing in front of the Fister, and I photoshopped it in as the background behind Hubert Humphrey as he's talked. So the Fister picture was taken in about uh, 2001, I think maybe even later than that. And he was photographed in the 1970s, early 1970s. That's a uh, unique piece, too. Yeah. Interesting. So. OK. So we're not trying to tell anybody that she was really there. We're not uh, saying this is real, and we never do. Right. But it's a work of art is the way we've done it. Right. 
using two different photographs from two different eras. Yeah. And um, taking a black and white photograph mm -hmm. and enhancing it to be a color. color. Yeah. Okay. What is this? This third one is um, part of the chorus for um, a performance on a cruise ship. Uh, they were doing Little Shop of Horrors, and these are the girls in the musical version that come out and sing interludes. And again, we were in the audience on this one, and we shot that from the audience. Other than a little, what you'd call normal retouching, uh, I would think, we did not heavily Photoshop that. That's, that's pretty straight, realistic shot. And that's the type of photograph that you would do even when you do the podunk festival yeah. or, um, yeah. or other concerts? Yeah. And Co any stage performances. We've done musicals. We were with the um, Suffield Playhouse, Park Road Playhouse. We photographed for the New Britain repertory. So we've, we've worked with a lot of theater companies. Mm -hmm. And you've come to some of my shows and Photograph yeah. so much I, I didn't know if you'd want me to bring that one with. Yeah, that's fine. That we've got Marcel on a bookmark that we use uh, for publicity to give away. And it's one of Faith's pictures that caught real great expression of, of Marcel. Yeah, I love that photograph. Okay, so thi this is called what you call performance Perf photography. Performance photography or live action photography. Uh, it, it, it includes theater, as you saw. It includes speeches. It can include athletics, sports. We photographed uh, basketball, um, hockey. Baseball games. Baseball games. Yeah. I should have thrown some of those in. Yeah. So, all right. So now let's talk about the next category. Okay. Another category of non-traditional portraiture. Very non-traditional. And what is that called? F figure or uh, nudes. Figure and nudes, okay. Uh, this is, again, non-traditional. It, it, well, it's definitely non-traditional. It's um, a figure study, uh, but it's heavily photoshopped. This is actually three photographs and about 10 to 12 hours of work. So what is this piece called? Out of the Fire. What I've done is I started out with my MRI. That's the red part encircling the picture. That's an actually MRI of you? An MRI of me that I colored uh, from the black and white. So you didn't take that photograph? I didn't take that one, no. I was the, the model for it, if you okay. want. <laughs> yeah. And then I hollowed out the center. That's essentially a, a lateral piece through my midsection. Okay. I hollowed out the center and put the dark background around it, black, and um, got rid of all the writing of, that the doctors put on. And then I put the, the flames behind it and a figure study. This uh, model was a paid model, and anything that you see or that I exhibit is paid models who have provided model releases. Faith and I also do uh, strictly confidential private commissions. And with those, after a year from when they last order, I erase them. They're gone. They are strictly confidential. But uh, anything that's shown, the model knows that it's going to be shown. There's, we're not trying to, to do anything uh, off color. We, we keep it very uh, artistic. Um, but this model did a studio session with us, and uh, she's a professional model, artist model. She models for a lot of different art schools. She's modeled at Manchester and at the um, New Britain Art League, and um, a, a lot of schools. She's, in, she's in very much uh, in demand. But uh, I just kind of liked that picture, and she was standing against a, a background. I took out the background, and then I distorted the lower portion of her body to make it look like she was a spirit coming out of the fire. 
on top of which I used what they call a luminosity factor so that she's semi-transparent or partly transparent so that you see color coming through from the other pictures. Uh, that's why she looks greenish in part. But uh, like I said, that's about 10 to 12 hours of work uh, creating a, an artistic work through Photoshop instead of with paint. Very good. It looks like a drawing. Thank you. <laughs> it's supposed to kind of look like a drawing or a painting. And uh, what is this piece called? Okay, this piece is called Sunset. It's a building that we could barely see from our location uh, on the shore in uh, Newport. We had gone out to, to look at uh, a lighthouse in uh, the Newport Bay, and I saw this place, and I shot it, and I turned it into a black and white line drawing and tinted it. Then I took out the lousy gray sky that was there, because this was taken on a rather gray day, and I put in a picture of the clouds and worked on the clouds till I got it to a rich sunset. But I left the um, picture itself, the picture of the house. It's not a lighthouse, it, although it sometimes looks like one, but you can see the captain's walk on the uh, upper level, the level there, just below the roof line. Uh, but I left that looking like a drawing, whereas the clouds are more realistic but extremely enhanced to look like a sunset. And um, I like the way that one turned out all. Quite interesting. <laughs> Very nice. So now let's look at another piece. This is this is qu this piece is quite interesting. Uh, what do you, Larry? What do you call this? I just kind of called it uh, over Hartford, or I don't even know if I really gave it a full name. Uh, but um, it's that again, two jets. No, it's one jet. Oh, it's one jet. <laughs> it's one jet. Okay. If you look, one is number eight hundred one, the one on the left, and the other one is one hundred eight. That's because I flipped it. I mirror imaged it. Okay. So I took two copies of the, the photograph of the jet, which was taken at an air show. And I took the picture of downtown Hartford that I took as I hung from a cloud by my toes. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I went up in a small aircraft. I, I literally hitchhiked a ride in a small aircraft. And he took me around uh, downtown Hartford and the western part of the Hartford area, and I shot aerials. In, uh, and I, li I like the way this seemed to work, so I put the two jets protecting Hartford from enemy attack. Okay. Uh, it's comical. It, it, it's a little comical. It, uh, at the time, it could have been a little political. Okay. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, uh, things were getting a little tense at times with the Afghanistan war and terrorism. And this, uh, I'm not sure when this was done, but it was, it was definitely after 9-11. So um, it was a little bit of political commentary, a little comical, but yet you'll notice that everything is realistic. I didn't distort this one into beyond photorealism except for the fact that I've got the jets in the air and I'd have to be in front of them to take that. And from the look of it, they might be on a collision course. Right. But, uh, Did you intentionally want them to look like they're gonna be on a collision course? No, I didn't think about a collision course. And uh, you know, if one pulls up, one pulls down, they more like aerial acrobatics, possibly. I just wanted the uh, the planes over the Hartford is what I was looking for, and I I think it worked. Several other people thought it worked. Uh, everything that I've given you has been exhibited in shows. 
Okay, so we have uh, one last piece, right? Okay. So this last piece is quite interesting. Um, I found this to be very romantic. That was part of the intent. Uh, this particular shot is one of Faith's. We shot it while we were on uh, vacation a year ago, thing or last Thanksgiving, up in the Poconos. I can't pronounce the name of the lake without reading it slowly. <laughs> but um, we went out near sunset. It was actually at sunset. We got, sunset. Some, we got some beautiful straight sunset pictures. But um, we printed this and went up specifically for a show called The Road Less Taken. Uh, and it didn't make it into that show. Uh, three other pictures of ours are currently hanging in that show at the Spectrum Gallery. But this one didn't make it, uh, probably because we had too many works that we submitted, because it's beautiful work. Uh, the couple was walking along the beach at the lake. Uh, it was Thanksgiving, so it was a little cold. And I think you can see that they're a little bit bundled up. And uh, then Faith turned this into um, kind of a pastel effect, so that it looks like it was done with rough pastels. And she added some angled brush strokes. And she made the sky a little, it, we did what's called posterization to the sky. And that caused the streaks to go across kind of the way they look in the different colors. And we pump up the color a little bit on a lot of these. But this is definitely beyond photorealism. Uh, but yes, it is. It was intended to be romantic, and it, it is. It's beautiful. It's a, one of my favorite pieces that you brought today. So thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, so let's talk about how this all started, because you went from taking black and white photos, you know, taking pictures for newspapers, and then experimenting. At, did you start experimenting after you got your digital camera, or? Oh, no, no, I did a lot of experimenting with um, black and white film. I bought uh, things like, like overlay transparencies that could make the film look like it was very grainy. It could give it a pattern, uh, a texture, make it look like it was printed on burlap, things like that. In the and I did it in the darkroom using black and white. I got into this. I started doing art uh, fairs, these sidewalk art shows or art shows in the park where a bunch of artists put up their tents, except in those days nobody had tents. You just put up your pictures and hope that it didn't rain. But my first show was the Milwaukee Journal's Young Artist Show back in about 1968 or 69. And I started doing these. Uh, mainly showing black and white frame prints and, and loose prints. Um, and I, I did quite a number of shows while I was in Milwaukee. But I was also starting my career as a tax accountant. So I was careful not to overdo that. And I got into the figure work through my involvement with the art gallery, as I had mentioned earlier. And then I was transferred. I, I received a promotion and a transfer to go to Reading, where I was head of the tax department for that uh, big four firm. At that time, it was a big eight firm. but Reading, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And um, my wife and I just did not really uh, assimilate there. And after five years, uh, I left Reading and came to Hartford in 1981. And we've been here ever since. We love Hartford. Uh, we don't knock Connecticut. Uh, it's a great state. And uh, Hartford's a great area. And for quite a while, I just let things lie and phot photographically and didn't do shows. I did uh, some work mainly for myself and private commissions. And then I ended up getting divorced. and. Uh, I met Faith, and 
the rest of there is history. Uh, but once we got married, uh, she was very interested in photography, and she wanted to get back into the shows because she had seen some of my work, and we had talked about it, and I had pictures of some of my booths. So uh, she said, let's try doing it again. So we went out, we bought a tent, uh, got a couple of tables, and started applying to the art shows. And we've gotten into a, a lot of art shows over the years. Uh, we've done Manchester several times, Open Studio Hartford for four or five years now. Our first show together was down in Stamford, where we uh, exhibited in a two-day show. And we find it to be a lot of fun, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. And then we constantly go out, take more pictures, and we uh, exhibit new works, try to exhibit new works every time we show. Fantastic. Now, what would you say to a person that wants to get into photography? You know, what would you recommend? Um, how would you, would, is it best to go to school and study photography or digital design? What, what's new? What should they do? Well, I lucked out in that when I took this position as the uh, newspaper photographer for the student newspaper, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee uh, school photographer, university photographer, and there was only one at that time, um, was really a great guy to work with, and he was a great help. So I learned essentially on the job with a uh, mentor, if you want to call him a mentor. But he helped me anytime I ran into a problem. He guided me. He taught me more about lighting. He taught me more about getting the picture, especially in low light, which was often necessary in newspaper photography. But he w was my mentor. So I didn't have formal photography training beyond when I went to camp. I would suggest if you can't find a good experienced mentor, take a basic photography course. Learn how to use your camera and get a, use a good camera, one that you can manually adjust as well as one with automation. That way you can really learn what's what and how to do things. Uh, anybody can pick up a point and shoot camera and take a photograph. But if you want to take a real artistic, well-composed photograph and then work on it digitally, because today everything is digital, uh, get yourself a good DSLR is what I prefer. Doesn't have to be the top of the line. Um, I bought Faith her first DSLR. It's, a, um, I think, the second tier Nikon. Uh, and she does beautifully with it. Mine is not top of the line, but it's a little bit higher up the line. And study, read books, look at photographic books, and see how the photographers are approaching subjects. Find the subject that you like, whether it be figure photography, or scenic photography, or animal photography. Find the subject you like, read about it learn about it, and practice. And when you start taking pictures, today it's a lot less expensive to do that than it was in the film days, because you don't have to pay to have the film processed. Just bring it up on your computer, the digital files, and if they're no good, you just ignore them. You pick out the few. My rule of thumb was when I was shooting film, if I got two or three good ones on a 36 exposure roll of film, I was happy. Because uh, you're always going to get shots that are not the greatest, they're, they're mediocre, some of them don't work at all, sometimes the camera won't focus as quickly as you want it to. So you'll have a lot of bad shots, but look for the good ones and don't be discouraged with the bad ones. Well, Larry Bolansky? <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. And, you know, 
when we get to this point of the show, do you look at a gentleman like Larry Belansky and say, wow, he took the time to study his art and practice beyond photorealism. He was able to create something and change it and also move his career and his photography through the technology as it exists today. And he's continuing to look at the future. So until we meet again, thank you. Let's talk.